Hi, welcome. This is Clemens at Elector. In this video, we will connect two potentiometers to a single digital microcontroller input and read the positions of both. In a previous video, I showed the way how to connect two digital rotary encoders to a microcontroller using only one analog input pin. In this video I will do the opposite, sort of, as I will connect two analog potentiometers to one digital input of a microcontroller. To read an analog value with a digital device like a microcontroller, you need some sort of analog to digital converter or ADC. Even though many microcontrollers have an ADC peripheral built in, they tend to have more digital I.O. pins than analog. Therefore, depending on the application of course, you may want to save the analog input for something more important than handling a user interface, and it would be preferable to use a digital input instead. There are many ways to convert an analog signal into a digital signal, but if it may consume only one wire or input, then you are limited to something like a voltage to frequency converter. One popular method is to generate a square wave with a frequency that depends on the input signal, the position of a potentiometer in our case. Another possibility is a square wave with a fixed frequency, but with a variable pulse width uh, controlled by a potentiometer. This is also known as PWM. Actually, in this case it is not correct to talk about a square wave, as a square wave has a fixed pulse width which cannot be modified. We should say rectangle wave instead. A rectangle wave consists of a pulse followed by a pause. Together they determine the period of the rectangle wave. The duty cycle is the ratio between the pulse duration and the signal's period and is given as a percentage. A duty cycle of 30% means that the pulse duration is 30% of the period of the signal, while a duty cycle of 70% means that the pulse duration is 70% of the period of the signal. A square wave has a fixed duty cycle of 50%. A duty cycle of 0% is a signal that is always low, a duty cycle of 100% is a signal that is always high. These values are not useful for us, as in those cases the frequency is zero. Since the duty cycle is specified as a percentage of the signal's period, it is independent of the signal's frequency. It is important to understand this, as there exists also pulse duration modulation, or PDM, where the length of the pulse is controlled by some variable, while the pause has a fixed length. In PDM, the frequency of the rectangle wave is therefore proportional to the duration of its pulses. In PWM, it is not. We will use the independency between duty cycle and frequency of PWM to transfer the position of two potentiometers with only one rectangle wave. One potentiometer controls the frequency and the other the duty cycle. The microcontroller measures the frequency of the rectangle wave and its duty cycle and converts these values back to potentiometer positions in a range from say 0 to 100. You will have noticed that I talk about potentiometer positions and not values or voltages. This is because these values are not known and they are unimportant. The only things we must know beforehand are the minimum and maximum frequency and duty cycle of the rectangle signal. To create a rectangle wave with variable frequency and variable duty cycle, I use this circuit. It is a classic op amp based triangle and rectangle wave oscillator. You can use any other generator capable of producing a rectangle wave with variable duty cycle. IC1D together with R1 and R2 form a comparator with positive feedback. IC1A with P1, R3 and C1 act as an inverting integrator. When the output of IC1D is low, the output of IC1A will ramp up at a speed determined by P1, R3 and C1. The voltage on the non-inverting input of IC1D ramps up too, until it becomes higher than the voltage on the inverting input pin 13. Now the output of IC1D goes high and, thanks to resistor R2, it drags its non-inverting input up with it. The voltage on this input is suddenly much higher than its inverting input, so ICD1's output remains high. The output of the inverting integrator IC1A reacts to this change by ramping down, but its speed is limited by P1, R3 and C1, so it takes a while before it becomes low enough to pull the voltage on the non-inverting input of IC1D below the voltage on its inverting input. When this happens, the output of IC1D goes low, and, again thanks to resistor R2, pulls the non-inverting input down with it. 
Suddenly the voltage on the non-inverting input is much lower than the voltage on the inverting input and so IC1D's output latch is low and we are back where we started. The oscillator is oscillating. The output of IC1A is a triangle wave. Potentiometer P1 allows adjusting its frequency. The value of P1 sets the minimum frequency, R3 fixes the maximum frequency. The frequency is, of course, also controlled by C1. With the given uh, component values I obtained a frequency range from about 250 Hz to 500 Hz, which is great for microcontrollers. The triangle wave is not perfect, but that doesn't matter in this application. IC1B acts as a comparator with its switching threshold set by P2, R6 and R7. It compares the triangle wave to a fixed voltage. Whenever the triangle wave is lower than the threshold, the output of IC1B is high, and when the triangle wave is higher than the threshold, the output is low. This way we obtain a rectangle signal with adjustable duty cycle. With the given component values, the duty cycle can be adjusted from about 10% up to 90%. By tweaking R6 and R7 you can modify the range. Ideally they would have identical values, but as the triangle wave is not perfectly centered around half the supply voltage, they are slightly different. The software required to decode the modulated rectangle signal can remain quite simple. As usual there are several approaches possible. The method I used is to make the main loop check the signal every once in a while. As the minimum frequency is 250 Hz, there is no point in doing this at a super high rate. Every 10 milliseconds or so is good enough. Then the program waits for a level change or edge of the signal to occur. You must always use the same edge of course, I chose a rising edge. Once the edge has been detected, the program writes down the starting time, T0, and waits for the next edge, a falling edge in my case. When this second edge arrives, the program writes down the time again, now as T1, and starts waiting for the third edge. When the third edge is detected, the time is written down once more as T2. We now have three timings from which we can calculate the frequency and the duty cycle. The period T is T2 minus T0 seconds. The frequency F is 1 over T hertz. The duty cycle D is 100 times T1 minus T0 divided by T, the period. D is a percentage. From these values we can derive the positions of the potentiometers. P1 is 100 times uh, frequency minus the minimum frequency over the maximum frequency minus the minimum frequency, and this is a percentage. P2, also a percentage, is 100 times the duty cycle minus the minimum duty cycle over the maximum duty cycle minus the minimum duty cycle. And there we are. As these are slightly imprecise values due to mainly potentiometer noise, you may want to apply some filtering or divide them by 2 to get rid of some of it. The same algorithm can be implemented using pin edge interrupts, uh, which allows it to be run as a background task. This leaves the main loop free for doing other things. Note that you don't have to calculate the frequency if you specify minimum and maximum periods instead. Here is the output of my program. As you can see, it works pretty well and the values obtained for P1 and P2 are independent of each other. Now you may say, why not also add amplitude modulation to the rectangle signal? Then you can have three potentiometers instead of two. Well, you can do this of course, but then you would need an analog input on the microcontroller and our objective was the opposite, to not use an analog input. As a last note, the technique presented in this video has more value than just being interesting or funny. As the information is transported in binary form over a single wire, it also allows for long distances between the potentiometers and the microcontroller. Furthermore, because it requires only one wire, it is very easy to add galvanic isolation. This is great for medical applications, for instance, or to control in a safe way a system that is directly connected to the mains. It can also operate over an infrared link, giving you remote control. Let your imagination run wild is what we say in such situations. Summarizing, in this video I showed you how to read out the position of two analog potentiometers with a microcontroller while using only one digital input. The circuit used is nothing new, the trick was to combine frequency and pulse width modulation into one rectangle wave to transport two signals at the same time. Okay, that's it. I hope you found it useful or interesting. 
If you did, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and tap or click the bell button. Thank you for watching.